Fatigue is something that we see in the office all the time, we doctors. It's very common. We see it in chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, multiple chemical sensitivities and Lyme disease, and people who are anemic, who have lung disease, heart disease. It's, it becomes a real challenge for us to function. An interesting study was done in the Canadian Medical Association Journal in July of 2012, where they looked at 200 women who were uh, premenopausal, and they treated them with an iron supplement for 12 weeks if they had borderline low levels of iron, but still a normal blood count. Normally what you see is an iron deficiency anemia in these women if there's enough of a deficiency of iron in the bloodstream to be able to allow hemoglobin, which is what makes, which carries oxygen to our cells and nourishes us. And what they found was, is over a 12-week period, just giving them a low dose of iron, about 80 milligrams a day, that about 50% of those women actually had a significantly less amount of fatigue. The placebo group, interestingly enough, had a 31% drop, but still we're looking at a 19% uh, decrease in fatigue by giving iron to women who have borderline low iron levels. That's important to know because there's a, a lot of women who you would never suspect that was the case because they aren't anemic, their iron levels aren't low enough that you'd think it'd be a problem, but it turns out to be. It's interesting that in these women, they didn't find there was a lot of anxiety and depression. The scores on that didn't change. So we should look at what iron does. Basically, iron is what makes hemoglobin, which is what carries oxygen in the red cells of our body and delivers it to our tissues. It's also an important cofactor in a lot of enzymes that produce ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. But on the flip side of that, if iron levels are too high, what happens is we age too fast because iron produces a lot of free radicals. When you have too much iron in the presence of oxygen, it leads to the production of hydroxyl radical, which is the most fierce radical in the body that makes us age too fast. It's all, it also interesting to know that cancer cells and bacteria, infecting bacteria, require iron. And they love to sequester it because it makes them be able to reproduce quicker. So if we feed ourselves iron in that setting, it's going to spur the development of cancer and it's going to spur the ability of an infection to spread. So it's interesting that our immune system is very clever. When we are infected, it sequesters iron, which means it takes up iron and it prevents it from going to bacteria. And you begin to see how complicated some of the biochemistry of the body is. And what I want to caution you, and the point of this, this presentation, is to say, yes, iron can be a very valuable thing uh, in some people who have borderline low iron levels, but you need to measure those levels before you just go out and start using iron supplements from the, say, from the pharmacy because they're over the counter. You certainly don't want to spur infections and you certainly don't want to uh, increase the, the uh, risk of developing uh, iron toxicity and you don't want to spread cancer. So iron might be an important thing, particularly for premenopausal women who are slightly fatigued because we know they lose more blood because of menstruation. And if we check our ferritin levels and if we are fatigued, some of the time we may find something that works pretty well to boost our energy levels in a rather simple way.